Mr. O'Connell, uh, in your uh, opening remarks, you mentioned about changes in Southeast Asia for crime, international crime over the last five years. Uh, was there anything in particular that's happened in the last five years that uh, you were drawing attention to? Thank you. No, the, we've seen that the transition in the last um, three years, particularly with regard to some of the, the threats that have been reported on the foreign terrorist fighter, as an example, and some of the expansion on that, some of the indigenous terrorist threats have started to, to migrate, not only across the region, but also further afield. So that, that presents some new challenges. Secondly is the, the growing economic uh, strength within the region is um, brought some change to the demographic with regard to some of the, the big city infrastructures and, um, and also the uh, rapid expansion of airline and uh, transit capabilities within the region has then made it far more dynamic for people to move about. So the smaller localised communities within the region have expanded now into more regional communities and then likewise in the last 18 months, particularly in a stronger way, more into a, what we call a global community-based uh, model, which is um, challenging us all. So we're seeing you know, migration patterns all over the world, uh, both on uh, family, touristic, but also economic ties. So um, that growth is only going to continue. And um, within those haystacks of movement, um, it gives greater opportunity for organized crime and terror threats to try and hide themselves. My name is Ikeda from the uh, Yumi in Japanese newspaper. I have a question to the DSG. And then, uh, what is the impact to the ASEAN uh, after this the program? Uh, could you elaborate more? And then, and one more thing is about the um, Rohingya issues. Uh, the, this kind of uh, framework uh, has uh, any impact to such uh, current issues? Thank you. So, uh, Thank you very much uh, for your question. Well, of course, I think that uh, uh, we have heard the uh, presentations this afternoon and, and we know that this is the kind of program that aims uh, to address uh, the, uh, the issues concerning um, uh, border, border control, border management. And as you know, that we are uh, entering in a new, a new phase of, uh, you know, basically uh, ASEAN community, you know, within the, the uh, next couple of months, you know, we're gonna start uh, uh, you know, moving in the new uh, uh, chapter of, shall we say, this uh, uh, ASEAN integration. One of the things that, uh, that uh, I think that, I mean, it's a very important issue in terms of the, the freedom of the movement of people, you know, uh, uh, how do we get uh, people to, to travel, you know, become closer, people-to-people uh, -people contact. But uh, at the same time, uh, I think that uh, Michael already uh, pointed out uh, the fact that within that uh, uh, dynamism, you also uh, have the possibilities that the organized criminal groups can also, uh, uh, you know, uh, penetrate, and uh, and that uh, becomes a challenge for for all the uh, countries within 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 ASEAN. While we, uh, I, I think that uh, the way the way we see, uh, at least from the pers perspective of us, is we really need to generate more uh, awareness among us uh, within within the countries, uh, uh, in in a region that this is something that we really need to pay attention to. Uh, apart from the the all, all the you know new. Uh, economic dimensions that, that this integration is going to bring to the region, but that, that is uh, uh, the point uh, needs to be made about, you know, uh, how, how this particular aspect, the vulnerability, yeah, how, how, uh, how we uh, manage the border, border area, the immigration issue was also mentioned as one of the uh, very important issue. And, and, and you know, uh, uh, how do we uh, uh, get the uh, co collaboration among the colleagues, uh, you know, authorities concerned within the region to, to, to be ready to deal with the situation? Now, I, I think that one of the things uh, uh, we really have to pay attention is the capacity building of, of the uh, officials concerned. And I think that uh, through projects such as this, uh, 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 EU, Interpol, Border management program, uh, 
which is now entered into the uh, second phase now, I think it would really uh, contribute to a, you know, strengthening the capacity of the criminal justice officials, including law enforcement officials within the country. So I think that that is, a, uh, uh, to answer your question, yes, uh, there, there is the, uh, the, the necessity that, that the ASEAN countries need to be, uh, to be alarmed that, yes, the prospect for closer economic integration uh, bring about uh, uh, you know, all, the, all, the, all the good things in terms of the uh, economic cooperation, but that we need to be aware and we need to strengthen uh, the efforts in, in, this, in this field. And of course, uh, uh, as uh, you know, I, I am sure that this is the uh, this applies for for a, a variety of uh, of uh, crime issues, you know, including uh, those uh, relevant to migration. And you mentioned the, the issue of the uh, Rohingya, Rohingya, and I think that uh, uh, what, what I what I can tell you is that it is this kind of a uh, forging closer uh, uh, collaboration among the law enforcement that that would be. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, would would be a better, better criminal integrated criminal justice response to such a situation. So we shall see, you know, uh, uh, more of the uh, uh, interaction. And of course, somebody mentioned about uh, the importance of intelligence channeling. Uh, this is all a lot of issues. So I hope that that pretty much uh, uh, responds to your question. Would you like to add something, Excellency Lapris, as the chair of SOMTC, maybe? I didn't know that you were on behalf of the media. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were my friend. <laughs> <laughs> now, the, uh, this nature of crimes, it, it's uh, flourished so rapidly and the ASEAN community, especially the law enforcement, somehow not uh, work as quick as possible in order to catch up the activity of criminals. So the Declaration of Transnational Crime in 1997 to deal with all eight areas of transnational crimes so you can imagine now, 2015, uh, we have an uh, uh, update our declaration. So we just start uh, in uh, September in uh, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. We have what we call the meeting of the uh, ASEAN Ministerial uh, meeting on transnational crime so we can uh, uh, accelerate our activity, in other words, plan of action that we have to improve also mechanism that to tackle this crime. And uh, our decision and our declaration is instead of what we call the ASEAN uh, Ministerial Meeting used to be every two years. Now, we decided that's no good. Must be once a year. And if any emergency call upon the minister, minister have to uh, pick up that emergency meeting. So the chair of the um, uh, meeting had to call that emergency as soon as possible. That's one of the improvement of our plan of action in the ASEAN framework. So uh, we not allow the criminal leading us. We better start do something that we can effectively have a mechanism that uh, uh, tackle those uh, criminal, and uh, on the issue of trafficking in person, uh, we already uh, in our bench we, the draft of what we call the ASEAN Convention against trafficking in person, <coughs> especially women and children, 
and also ASEAN plan of action to complement the, the, the uh, convention ready uh, the, uh, minist the ministerial meeting already considered that and we're going to uh, 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 convey that to the summit coming soon in November 2015 when the summit comes. Then we ask our leader to look into it, adopt it, and sign it. So we, we have this kind of uh, convention coming up. And uh, also we we not uh, just uh, sit down and uh, to be complacent. We also working on what we call arms smuggling. That Cambodian is the lead shipper of that matter, and the EU already cooperate with us. Possibility that we are going to talk about that uh, uh, initiative to draft uh, convention against the arms smuggling sometime in February 2016. And on that, also the uh, 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 Japan also uh, very interested in helping us on that uh, arms smuggling as well. And uh, on the other matters, the Thailand already introduced the the nine uh, uh, area crime that uh, they, we call wildlife and timber trafficking. And we consider that one of that uh, crime also instead of eight, now it become nine area of crimes. So we moving along. And uh, today, like I said now, uh, ASEAN is so fortunate we have a partner as EU, and we have a friend as Interpol, mm -hmm. provide us all this uh, uh, goodie to uh, uh, tackle the, the criminal. So we appreciate uh, EU, and we appreciate uh, 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 Interpol. Any more questions? Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Afra from the Jakarta Post. I want to ask uh, to Mr. Francisco Fontaine about the what are the main challenges in tracking the movement of transnational organized crime group, and how will um, you, as an Interpol, try to strengthen the information sharing between the regions? Thank you. Well, thank you very much for thinking that I could answer the question. <laughs> That is extremely a uh, uh, technical question. I, I think there will be a much more interesting answer uh, from a professional. Uh, Thank you, Your Excellency. That's at the heart of this program, really. Um, we've seen um, time and time again that there is a, a necessity for collaboration over and above existing policing channels and law enforcement channels in the region. This program is, is built upon a series of other campaigns that we've been running and initiatives, um, not only dealing with uh, the classic border um, capability, but as His Excellency touched upon with regard to firearm smuggling as well, the use of biometrics and forensics in the region, um, and also the phenomenon that we've got with environmental crime and the trading of, of commodities of that, because we've seen time and time again that criminal groups um, will look to exploit any opportunity to create illegal profit and to bring harm to communities. Also, we've seen time and time again that terrorists will look to exploit weaknesses in our uh, protection capabilities. So we have to get better at sharing the intelligence and the information that we have across the, the, the region. Um, and what's ambitious about this program is not only that it's looking to support the master plan um, that the region has in its roadmap to 2020, but is trying to bring about a new dynamic to the community of the ASEAN countries, and in particular, looking at some of its thinking for developing a visaless community that allows for uh, community members to move with ease. But that can only be successful if we know what the threat is and where it may be. So it's really important that the work that we're doing um, through Interpol and with our, 
our colleagues in the, in the region, um, that we can convince them of the need to be sharing information and intelligence, often sensitive intelligence and information, but they're sharing it in a secure way to trusted partners and trusted neighbours. So Interpol tries to come into the, the region as, a, as an expert, but also as, a, a, as an independent law enforcement body that can convince and educate of the merits of sharing that intelligence. His Excellency, this, in his presentation earlier on, spoke of the lessons that need to continually be learned. And we're here to remind the new law enforcement officers that are growing and coming through the ranks um, of their responsibility to learn as they go, so that they become internationalized in their policing capabilities, to be willing to share that information in a controlled way, but also to how better to respond when they receive information from their partners. Because through that collaboration, we bring about integration. Through that integration, we bring about safer communities. So I hope that helps. Thank you.